Hello and welcome to Vision This Week on Channels Television. I'm Bukola Joe Oketumbi. Air travel remains a primary mode of transportation utilized by human traffickers. According to the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, in its 2018 global report on trafficking in persons, 20% of the 225,000 victims detected worldwide between 2003 and 2016 have been trafficked by air. So, airlines, the crew, as well as passengers can play a key role as first-line responders in detecting victims and their traffickers before departure and while on board the aircraft. In what ways will the aviation industry in Nigeria be active in curbing human trafficking through our air borders? That's our interest, plus a look at the Bauchi Airport in northern Nigeria. Our flight takes to the sky now. The International Airline Association says aviation is the business of freedom. Airlines connect businesses to markets, reunite families and friends, and facilitate tourism and cultural exchange. Unfortunately, the global air transport system can also be exploited by criminals for the illegal trafficking of men, women and children. The United Nations defines human trafficking as a recruitment, transportation, transfer, harboring or receipt of persons by improper means such as force, abduction or coercion for an improper purpose including forced labor. Human trafficking is the fastest growing and second largest criminal industry in the world. A report by the International Labor Organization estimates that 24.9 million people are living in modern slavery, over 75 of whom are women and children. Over 75 of whom are women and children. Although the responsibility for identifying, apprehending and prosecuting those perpetrating human trafficking rests with the government and the national law enforcement agencies, the airline industry recognizes that it can play play an important role in helping to prevent this crime and that's what's happening at this workshop in Lagos, Southwest Nigeria. We will be looking to you for help to spread the message and really be our allies in this, in this particular issue to combat human trafficking um, in Nigeria. Um, airlines and, and their crew could represent, of course, first-line responders because you will be the first ones if you suspect something, but also the last line of detection. Because once the person actually gets off, we can lose them when they go into the general public. So, you know, you, you do play a really critical role. Border communities from where this human trafficking could take place, uh, law enforcement agencies obviously will be partners with us, um, as well as state governments, road and air transport sectors. It's, look, this is something that cannot be addressed by one agency. It is genuinely a partnership of government, of civil society, of media, of various people coming together to really combat this issue and make Nigeria safer and, you know, uh, help, help people who are victims of this. While aviation agencies and other partners, including airlines, are part of this workshop, the crew of Air Peace Flight in June 2018 formed an attempt by two Nigerian women to traffic a three-month-old baby boy from Nigeria to Banjul in the Gambia. Top officials in two aviation agencies believe this partnership will do the sector a lot of good. In my job as a consumer protection person in NCA, most times you see people who are traveling and they are not happy. You know, travel is supposed to be pleasurable. But when you see them like that, you begin to wonder. And at my officers, good job you're doing. They most times go to these people and try to talk to them. Are you OK? Is there anything wrong with you? Those are some of the signs we need to look out for. When you see somebody who is not excited about travel, who, is, who can't even take a decision, somebody is guiding him or her, OK, go this way, come this way. Most of them don't even have their travel documents on them. They are being held by people. And when we see such signs, we go out and ask questions. Over the years, we had had to witness our young uh, kids, kids men, kids men, daughters, you know, going through the airport in large numbers, being chaperoned, kind of, being guided. Um, earlier on, something was said about the presence of airlines here. They need to be here because of the issue of inadmissible passengers that we had over time. And I know the effect it's had on some airlines. I do know that some airlines actually had to close down their businesses in Nigeria. They were seriously affected by the issue of human trafficking. 
I know, I know at Italia what the issue of human trafficking did now. We do know one of the driving factors of human trafficking is economic and social issues. We know the kind of issues we have in Nigeria with regards to unemployment of youth. Large section of our youth are seriously unemployed. And that unemployment, everybody thinks that over there, the other side of the fence is greener, you know, green pastures, everybody striving, everybody, even those of us who are working in the industry, some of us want to go outside. Following a series of consultations with partners and with the support of the U.S. government, UNODC, together with NAPTIV, have developed a series of specific airports and onboard sensitization materials on trafficking in persons aimed at travel agents, airport personnel, flight crews, and passengers. The material seeks to provide basic information on how to identify victims of trafficking and how to report such suspicion safely. A new initiative to combat the scourge of human trafficking must be developed and airlines have the right to deplane suspected victims of trafficking. That's coming from the Director General of NAPTIP and she was speaking at a recent event in Lagos. The challenges of human trafficking and irregular migration are quite enormous and new initiatives must be developed to ensure sustained successes against these twin monsters. The fight against human trafficking requires the collaborative efforts of everyone, especially those who operate at our airports and land borders. And I want to say even to the airlines at this point, you have a right to offload anyone you suspect is a potential victim of trafficking, irrespective of whether the NIS has cleared them or not. You have a duty to them to offload them. They don't have to fly just because they've been cleared, because most times they are cleared through all sorts of fraudulent means. And so we must not look the other way. We know what is going on. So, you know, when there are things, extraordinary circumstances require extraordinary steps to be taken. Do what has not been done before, just to make sure that as much as possible, you prevent the incidences of human trafficking from occurring right before your faces. And some people make this mistake to say, oh, you know, there are adults. Yes, an adult can be trafficked. It has nothing to do with the age. So don't make no mistake by saying, well, she's, what, she's not an, you know, a minor, she's matured, she had a passport, a visa. Anybody can be trafficked. <laughs> the baby is back. The baby was brought back, and we've been taking care of this baby. The baby is with us. He's about three years old now, growing up happily, and all is well with him. Our action is in line with the provisions of Section 35 of the Trafficking in Persons Prohibition Enforcement Act 2015, titled Responsibility of Airlines, Commercial Carriers, Tour Operators, and Travel Agents. The ease, speed, and safety of air travel makes it an attractive form of transportation for criminals who want to deny freedom to others through the crime of human trafficking. Over 60% of traffic victims are known to be trafficked across our international borders with significant numbers passing through the airports. It is worthy of note that human trafficking can be difficult to detect due to its clandestine nature, such that victims often remain hidden in plain sight. This highlights the imperative for a workshop of this nature, which will acquaint key regu regu regulators and operators in the aviation industry with the provisions of the law and to raise the awareness of frontline officers about the indicators of trafficking and their roles in mitigating the crime. It is our hope that at the end of this workshop, counter-trafficking messages will be conspicuous at our major airports, at the check-in and boarding areas, the boarding, along the boarding gates, and as part of the airline's in-flight audio and visual communications.
Aviation safety means the state of an aviation system or organization in which risk associated with aviation activities or indirect support of the operation of aircraft are reduced and controlled to an acceptable level. Ensuring that the industry in Nigeria continuously remains safe is why these experts are guarded. The safety remains the bedrock of aviation practice world over. What this means is that safety is paramount and others follow. Agreed, there are remarkable improvements and growth in the system, given that the number of the flying public has not dropped. I, however, think that we can do better by upgrading infrastructures across board to give room for more investment opportunities. Developing key infrastructure at the airport, strong partnerships and key safety policies is also important. The minister is urging each and every stakeholder to ensure that they join hand with the government to build a viral aviation sector where the job, the system up well, instead of job loss, there will be job creation. All, most of the uh, most of the uh, items in this uh, roadmap are done under the PPP, Public-Private Partnership, which the government is saying that we have to partner with the private sector to develop aviation because there is a, a dearth of infrastructure and aviation in this country. And the government realizes that only with the participation of the private sector in partnership with the public sector, can they really, really develop aviation sector in this country? That is why it has opened the field for all the private sector to participate fully in the development of aviation in this sector. The worldwide grounding of the Boeing 737 MAX, now in its eighth month, is driving up costs for airlines as they cancel thousands of more flights into the year 2020. American, United and Southwest have joined airlines, removing the planes grounded from their shadow. The 737 MAX has been grounded since mid-March after two fatal crashes killed 346 people. It's likely the model will not return to flight until January 2020. Boeing executives have said they expect aviation regulators to clear its best-selling plane to fly again in the fourth quarter. But the Federal Aviation Administration said it has no firm timeline for lifting the grounding. American Airlines last week said it cancelled 9,000 475 flights in the third quarter because of the grounding order, which eats its pre-tax income by about $140 million. It expects to cancel another 140 flights a day until it expects the plane to return, which would mean more than 14,000 cancellations in the fourth quarter and early January 2020. And finally, on News Flash, Britain may have no choice but to agree to an orderly exit from the European Union because the disruption of a hard Brexit will be too damaging to the British economy. This is coming from the chief executive of Ryanair, Mr. Michael O'Leary. Mr. O'Leary added that Europe's largest low-cost carrier does not expect an impact on its business. He was speaking at a Reuters newsmaker event in London, the United Kingdom. If you look out long enough, Tim, I don't think Brexit has any effect on our business. Mm -hmm. Because if you look out long enough, no matter what happens, and nobody knows what the hell is going to happen in the next couple of weeks or months on Brexit, ultimately the UK, whether it leaves the European or doesn't leave the European, will do a trade deal with the European Union. There will be, I don't think there's any way of going back to having kind of, you know, not having, UK not being a member of open skies, that you won't have, you know, remarkably porous borders between the UK and UK. A 25 kilometer drive from Bochi Metropolis will take you to the Sa Abubakar Tofa Abalewa International Airport, Bochi State. The airport is relatively small in size and takes pride in having one of the longest runways in Nigeria with a state-of-the-art facility. 
The apron has a width of 150 meters and 300 meters length, capable of accommodating four Boeing aircrafts at a time. So we have apron where the uh, aircraft land and um, uh, first. That's, uh, we have the, an apron of uh, width of 150 meters, length of 300 meters, which is capable to accommodate uh, boys 747, at least four of them. Skid marks are visible on the runway, but it is still not yet a busy route for commercial airlines. Domestic flight schedules are three times a week and passengers' traffic has surged. Passengers on a local flight schedule go through security checks. Some of them appear to be comfortable with services at the airport. The services are fine. For a small airport, uh, check-in was quick. Security was quick and professional. Um, actually, the toilets are clean and fine. And there's somewhere to buy some snacks and drinks for a small airport. I actually think it's, it's okay, it's fine. The airport, if you will remember, has been from the past, uh, I think, three, four, five years, I think. Considerably, it is a new place, and uh, the facilities here, I think, are still in perfect condition. The utilities, the air conditioning, the washrooms, and... Uh, the checking in and uh, the security uh, system, I think they are all working to my satisfaction. Managers proclaim that the airport is of international standard, but such operations happen once a year during Muslim pilgrimage to Mecca. Concerns have also been raised over adequate maintenance. The international operations so far, we only have our international operations during Hajj operation only so far. But we are now preparing or we are praying that later we will be having international operations even within Africa. Let's start with it and see. You know, each and every equipment needs uh, uh, maintenance, services and other things. So sometimes when the, when the equipment got problem, most of our equipment have been imported were being imported, then the people that will attend to the maintenance are always uh, expatriates. So immediately when I inform the state government, they take action. But for them to come, it may take time. There are few suggestions authorities may want to welcome to improve quality of services. When I came in, I noticed that the baggage collection was still done manually. So I think if they can automate that, I think that would be great. With a conveyor belt, which is usually standard in most airports nowadays. So that's my only suggestion. Perhaps a takeover from the federal government may enhance smooth operations and ease the burden on the state. Helicopter flights booking has been introduced by ride-hailing company Uber Technologies in New York City, where users with a little cash to spare can fly via helicopter to John F. Kennedy International Airport. While Uber Copter offer flights to and fro Lower Manhattan become available to all users on October 3rd, the feature had already been made available to its premium members in June. Yeah, so I think in this in this overall you know kind of end to end product for Uber Air, what we're focused on is what we do really well, which is operations and technology, and so creating the platform of this multimodal service that connects you from you know the first mile car or whatever that might be getting to the Skyport in the future, the Heliport now. 
that flight portion and then the last part of it, we're getting from that last mile heliport or skyport to your final destination. We're the ones who can kind of pull all of that together and we're uniquely positioned as Uber to basically solve that really complex problem. Yeah, so we are, um you know, we, we look at where there's demand. We do a lot of trips to the airport from Manhattan right now. And so we know that there's a there's a lot of demand to get from Manhattan to JFK and, and, and back both ways. And so we think that this is a perfect opportunity to really provide value to our riders in a way to get to JFK even faster um, than they can now. And so we think that it will be, it will certainly, you know, helicopters are kind of, uh, they're expensive. And so we, it's going to be a premium product, but we think we're actually able to offer a fairly accessible uh, entry point with this. It's going to cost $200 to $225 uh, one way to, to take a flight, uh, to take this, this trip. And, uh, and, and we're, but we're really excited to be able to offer this to all of our, all of our riders now who really need to save time going, or just want a great view, going, uh, going from Manhattan to JFK. The roughly eight-minute flight costs between $200 and $225 per person and include ground transportation on either side of the trip. The flights are operated by Heli Flight Shares, a licensed company. So we really see Ubercopter as, as paving the way um, for this future vision that we have um, for Uber Air. So for a truly scalable product um, that can be accessible to a wide range of people and operate in, in, in in a more diverse set of routes, we think we need a new class of vehicles that are all electric. And with all electric vehicles, we can operate in a very uh, environmentally friendly way and at the same time have lower operating costs and be quieter. So Ubercopter is just uh, going to be, it will be limited. We're offering this on a single route right now. And it's really building the learnings for this future product that we think will really be transformational in the way people can move around. And now to China, where cutting-edge helicopters caught a generous amount of attention at the China Helicopter Exposition. The heavy helicopter is one of the major highlights. It is very large in size and strong in functions. Visitors can have a close look at the helicopter through VR technology. This heavy helicopter that we designed has an internal load capacity of over 10 tons and an external suspension capacity of over 15 tons. It focuses on solving the transport and lifting of construction equipment to China's plateau and our pine areas. Special situations such as fire control and personnel search and rescue require helicopters to respond quickly. Unmanned helicopters capable of flying at high speed are one of the future development trends of helicopters in this service field. When the propeller is put in the vertical direction, the vehicle can conduct vertical takeoff and landing. When it's shifted to the horizontal direction, the vehicle can conduct high speed flights. We adjust the balance of the lift power in the front and rear so as to make the shift and flight more stable. Some models of conceptual helicopters are also on display. One of such is this helicopter with a unique shape that can achieve inside takeoff through a 90 degree rotation of wings and the cooperation of the propeller. It can also fly at a high speed. And that's our program for this week. Thank you so much for being a part of it. See you next time. I'm Bukola Joe Okitsumbi.